Hello, everybody, and welcome to our studio show here on MXGP TV. This weekend, it's my home Grand Prix, the MX Grand Prix of Great Britain at Matley Basin. My guest this week, as always, Adam Wheeler on trackoffroad.com, but we're joined by a couple of Monster Energy Kawasaki riders this weekend as well. Thomas Covington from MX2, and a little later on, Tyler Rattray from MXGP. But before we start giving this guy uh, a bit of a grilling, let's see what happened uh, last time out when we were at the MXGP of Spain in MX2. Here's some Race 2 highlights. And uh, it was a, a new winner for the third time this season, and he was on a Yamaha. It was an explosive start in MX2 Race 2 as Benoit Pacherel. Severbril Yakov and Brent Van Donick all touched bars and crashed out spectacularly halfway down the start straight. But it was Dylan Ferrandis, number four on the Monster Energy Kawasaki, who grabbed the Fox hole shot. Julian Lieber and Valentin Guillaume were right there on the two standing constructs Yamahas, though, as Tim Geiser was hanging around around 10th place, just behind Jeffrey Hurlings and Paul's Jonas. Jeffrey Hurlings had this big moment and was very lucky to pick himself up and rejoin the race. He picked himself up in 19th and went to work despite his bike being bent out of shape. Tixier went after Julian Lieber and his race was made a little bit easier when the young Belgian fell out of third, handing that third place to the factory Kawasaki rider. Hurlings had caught and passed the 99 of Max Anstey and was challenging all of a sudden for the top step of the podium. He made that move on Tonkov. That got him up into seventh, which is where he would stay. And towards the end of the race, out of nowhere, Tim Geiser on the Garibaldi Honda had worked his way up into a challenging position. He went past Ferrandis to take second, whilst that was the pass for the lead. Valentin Guillo on Ferrandis. 92, Valentin Guillo on the standing construct Yamaha took his first ever race victory in MX2. And at that stage, he didn't know that he'd also won the overall Grand Prix. Hurlings came home, a credible seventh, but that was enough for second overall. And just behind him was Jordi Tixier in third. And Hurlings continues to lead the championship. He's now 56 points clear of Ferrandis, but for standing construct, their second ever Grand Prix, their first as an official Yamaha factory team. Well, they were some of the highlights then from Spain a couple of weekends ago. And uh, Thomas Covington uh, joins us now here from uh, Team Monster Energy Kawasaki uh, in the MX2 category. Uh, Thomas, welcome back to Great Britain. This is where it all started for you as a, a European 250 Championship rider uh, back in 2013. Does it feel good to be back? Yeah, it definitely feels good to be back in England. Uh, uh, I really enjoy this track. It's sort of like American track, a little bit big and wide and fast. So uh, I enjoy coming here and racing and uh, seem to always do pretty well here. And... Um, just remind us again, though, you had such an impressive, uh, impressive debut performance in that MX2 uh, in the European 250 category. Um, but we saw you last year riding a full year in MX2. Do you kind of, does part of you sometimes wish that maybe you'd had a year in European Championship to learn those tracks before stepping up this year? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think if I would have had a year in the European, I would have been more familiar with the whole season and the tracks and Europe and everything. But um, I'm glad I did what I did with MX2 because. Um, it just exposed me to so much more and uh, the speed of the top guys. I think I learned more in the MX2 last year than I would have staying in European, even though uh, the results weren't, weren't the greatest. Was it tougher than you thought it was going to be, though, after riding the 250 European Championship and running up front, and then I guess it was kind of like being in the deep end, wasn't it? Yeah, for sure. I knew it was going to be tough, but um, you know, at the first few GPs that I ran, I, I did really well, and then uh, towards the middle of the season, sort of hit a slump, had a dip there, and then towards the end, started pulling myself back out. So, um, yeah, and this year it's been going a lot better. I mean, uh, again, the first three flyways were really good. And then um, after that, just uh, had a little bit of bad luck and uh, results haven't been great. But I've been happy with my riding, just been uh, keeping my head down and staying focused, get, uh, stay good through the whole season. When you were first here two years ago, could you have imagined being where you are now and all that's passed through, like, you know, changing around the teams, changing the bikes, 
you know, changing sort of where you live, the whole shebang. It seems like you've had like, you know, a little mini lifetime's worth of experience in, you know, like two years time. Yeah, for sure. It's been a, a heck of an experience for sure. Um, when I came over here in the European, I had no idea I would ever, ever come over here and be living here for two years. So um, uh, things have changed a lot, but I, I think for the better, just uh, some really cool life experiences and uh, makes me better as a, as a rider as well. Are you generally feeling more comfortable, though, in MX2 after having then that first year in the big class last year compared to the 250 Europeans? Yeah, definitely. This year I feel more comfortable everywhere. I, I know the tracks. I know the riders and everything. And, um, yeah, I think, again, this year I'm still learning. So I'm still pretty young, and uh, uh, I think next year will be even better. Just keep working to uh, improve. Because what many people forget is it's only your second year as a pro. You know, it's not like you have, you've come here with a whole background of racing in the U.S. You know, it's uh, still pretty much the deep end, isn't it? And for me, the most important thing with, you know, your your races have been, like, as we can see here in Thailand, was the starts. Last year, you couldn't buy one. And this year, you know, your, your starts generally have been much better and you've been able to run at the front. Yeah, I mean, uh, we worked really hard in the off season with the whole Kawasaki Monster Energy team and uh, got the bike a whole like a lot better this year than it was last year so um that's helping on the starts and everywhere pretty much so um yeah i mean i just want to get a good start this weekend and uh stay up front like i have a few times this year already what do you think made the difference here in in thailand um two good solid rides two fifth place finishes fourth overall a career best for you at that stage uh we'll talk argentina in a moment was it um just time on a bike was it the good starts that adam just mentioned was it the heat factor as well because it was pretty humid there I think uh, the two biggest factors was, well, the biggest one was the start. You know, if you start up front, I'll have to uh, deal with the guys because here in the GPs, the the class is pretty deep. You know, the guy back in 11th, 12th place, he's a good rider. You know, he's doing his motos training, and uh, sometimes it's hard to come through the pack real fast uh, during the motos. So when you get a good start, you just kind of see the lines of, like, hurlings and top guys and uh, go along with it. But uh, And also the heat in Thailand was just intense and uh Maybe I was a little bit more used to that uh, than the other guys, so that helped me out a little bit. Was, you, was it hotter than you thought it was going to be? I know you went there last year anyway, different track, but because as an American, when they get yeah. to high summer and you're racing nationals, for instance, everybody in Europe automatically assumes that you guys are better with dealing that kind of, uh, that kind of intense heat. Yeah, for sure. It was more intense than anything I've ever ridden in, for sure. Like uh, Loretta Lands back home, it's always the hottest race we have of the year. Uh, yeah, this was hotter than <laughs> any year I'd been at Loretta. <laughs> so it was. Uh, I struggled a bit with the heat too. I think it was. Uh, it was crazy. Well, you mentioned flyaways having uh, a bit of success there. Again, it was fourth overall in Argentina. Um, first of all, what did you make of the track there? Because uh, a lot of positive feedback from the riders in general. Yeah, the track was awesome. I, uh, I loved it. It's one of my favorite ones now, and uh, it's a little bit sandy. Like uh, actually, the whole place reminded me of Mammoth quite a bit uh, mm -hmm. in the U.S. Just a little sandy on top and hard underneath and all the trees around. And the fans were awesome in Argent Argentina too. Like so many people there all up in the trees and <laughs> it, was, it was fun. Two seventh place finishes there. Again, another fourth overall. Uh, things were starting to look good. A bit of consistency starting to build into your, uh, into your riding. You must have been thinking at that point, okay, we've finally arrived and we've taken yeah. that next step. Yeah, for sure. I was feeling awesome after those first three GPs, you know. Um, uh, even though, yeah, I just missed out on the podium actually in Argentina, so uh, with a little bit of luck, you know, I could have been right there. And uh, so, yeah, I was feeling good. And then we came into Italy at Arca, and I've always struggled so much with that track. I think a lot of people do. But, um, yeah, it's a lot of crashes and uh, never could get the flow on that track. So, um, yeah, I just got to work on that there. But I guess Trentino is one of those tracks that's just – just totally different to anything you'd experience riding at home. I know you can ride hard, slick, um, blue groove circuits, but there's a lot of rock there, you know, really firm base. Um, I think I spoke to you on Saturday, and you could already see you weren't as comfortable in your riding. And it's not easy just to go there and adapt immediately, is it? It's, it is a difficult place to go to. Yeah, it's hard for sure. Yeah, like you mentioned, all the little rocks on top and really hard underneath and uh, pretty much just one line through all the corners sort of sliding around. Um, it's something something special for sure. Thomas, I mean, you took a third place in the second motor in your very first Grand Prix. That was a flyaway as well. You had a good 
begin into the season in the flyaways this year. Coming back to Europe, it's, it seemed to be a little bit harder for you. Is, is that a coincidence or is it, you know, you have to base yourself in another continent and it's a little bit more, I don't know, where maybe the homesickness hits home or, um, I don't know, you have a bit more of a routine that's, you know, not like a suitcase, a hotel, a hire car kind of thing. Does that come into play at all for the whole campaign? Yeah, I think for sure all the different things uh, together, you know, sort of make it difficult uh, in Europe for me because at the flyaways, you know, I'm uh, normally I, I go back home to the U.S. because we have uh, a break in between this, and uh, I'm in my routine, my usual thing with my family and friends, and then uh, come to Europe, and yeah, I'm just <laughs> by myself, you know, uh, getting in the in the routine of training and with the weather raining <laughs> quite a bit, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's pretty tough. And also the tracks get really gnarly here in Europe. You know, you've got five different classes racing on the weekend, and uh, by the time your motor comes around on Sunday, it's like the track is just brutal. Even before free practice, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah, for in sure. Holland, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess that's one of the things, isn't it? I mean, we're almost out of time anyway. Um, but it's people don't really see what you're having to do here as, as a young rider. Uh, it's one thing to say, okay, it's come from the US, but you have the support of your team. But you are literally here on your own, aren't you? You, you do have... Uh, your mechanic that you deal with and, and talk to and that kind of thing. I'm sure there's riders around a paddock that you may be starting to get to know, but you are here on your own. It's not easy. Different, whole different culture, different nationalities as well, one week to the next. Yeah, for sure. It's pretty difficult, but um, yeah, my team and my mechanic, they take they take good care of me and uh, they're sort of like my European family. <laughs> so I stick with them and uh, go home as, as often as I can. And just one word quickly, Paul, ab about, you know, Ryan Villapoto being over because countryman, but also almost a, almost a teammate, you know, in the, in the Monster Energy Kawasaki setup. I imagine if things were going very well with him or very easy for him, then that would have a, a roll on to you. But he's crashed, he's injured, he's gone back to the U.S. Is that also a little bit of something that's been taken away from how you'd be able to set up in Europe? Well, yeah, I mean, I, know, I sort of just do my own thing, but... Um for sure, when he was coming over, I was hoping maybe we could uh, ride together. I could learn a bit from him and uh, hang out. But, um, yeah, he's got his plate full right now, I'm sure, <laughs> dealing with everything, you know. Um, it, like it is for me, hard to come over. It's hard for him. It's uh, He's been racing in the U.S. his whole life. So he doesn't – coming over here just for one year, it's, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Well, um, finally – Obviously, we just touched on it a moment ago since you've come back from the flyaway races. It's been a little bit difficult in terms of results and consistency and that kind of thing. A track you know well, a track you've settled down with the first time you came here a couple of years ago. You're going to try to look to th turn things around this weekend? Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I'm going to go for it this weekend. And uh had a good feeling out at free practice this morning. So, um, yeah, I'm feeling good for this weekend. Should be awesome. And can you state publicly that the Eve de Maria locks are going to be gone <laughs> when you get on the podium, the first sort of Grand Prix podium finish? I don't know. They're more like Leonard Skinner locks. <laughs> Let's say that. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not French locks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, look, we're out of time with Thomas Covington, Team Monster Energy Kawasaki. Uh, we wish him all the best this weekend. But before we meet uh, his senior teammate, Tyler Atre, in MXGP, let's see what happened uh, in the MXGP class in Spain uh, two weeks ago, as seen through the eyes of Roman Fevre on Yamaha. Behind the gates, it's always hot, uh, especially the, this GP in Spain. We try uh, to, to have some fresh air with the ventilator before the start uh, to cool down. When the five uh, second board uh, came up, uh, it goes really quick, so uh, you try to, to, to catch the, the, the best line you can, you can have. When you are on the pack, uh, it's pushing everywhere and uh, just you need to too old uh, to pass those three corners. I decide to, to even if I, it costs a lot of the energy, to, to make the pass uh, on Bobrichev and Nagel. To pass some, somebody, it's like a, like a rider, even if it's Nagel, Caroli, or De Salle. I was cutting the corner before, to, to went on the inside, so uh, my line was, I think, better. I saw the sal uh, coming on the front and uh, yeah, hurting pretty hard the ground. 
when I took the second place, uh, I said to myself, yeah, just uh, ride uh, easy, save some energy because the race is really long and it was hot. Yeah, I was catching in two laps Keroli and uh, I was thinking he slowed down to have some energy at the end, but uh, yeah, it wasn't. So I decided to, to, to make the pass on him. <laughs> on this race, I think I have the flow. <laughs> When I make the mistake, uh, I stole the bike in the corner. I was a uh, little bit angry, but uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, my fault, only my fault. Oh, when Caroli passed me, I lost a little bit the rhythm and uh, just uh, I didn't have the speed as before. So uh, I decided to, to cool down a little bit, some few laps and uh, to, to try again. But uh, yeah, it was a little bit faster. First, I was not sure that I was on the podium, so uh, because they, my mechanic didn't write me on the on the pier board to don't put pressure on myself. So I was a little bit tired, but uh, when I passed the finish line and I saw third on the plate, uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing feeling. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling when you are on the box uh, with the champagne. Uh, yeah, you know that you did the job. So uh, it's uh, yeah, it's. It's really nice, it's really nice. I hope uh, to have many more uh, that this year. So, as seen through the eyes of Roman Fevre uh, just a couple of weeks ago in Spain, in Talavera, but uh, our next guest joins us here, Tyler Rattre, Monster Energy Kawasaki Racing Team, and he's back on a Kawasaki this year. Um, Tyler, good to have you here at Matterley Basin. Um, I guess you're feeling a little bit more at home because you spent quite a, a number of years on Kawasaki before you returned to Europe. How's it feeling uh, on the new bike this year? Yeah, it's definitely uh, you know, great to be back on Kawi. Um, I bought, built a good relationship with them in the US uh, when I went over there and raced for Pro Circuit and also got to fill in on Ryan's bike uh, for the Nationals and on one of the summers. So, you know, it's great to be back with, uh, with Monster and Kawasaki. It's, uh, like I said, it was a big part of my career going over to, to the US and racing for Mitch and I've had a great time with them and you know, happy to be back. Tenth in points. Uh, championship hasn't started as well as you wanted to in Qatar, for instance, you know, or just hovering just inside the top 20. What, what was the problem there in Qatar? You know, I was... Uh, myself and Ryan were in the US, uh, obviously riding, getting ready for the season. Um, we did some testing over there, which, uh, which everything went well. We came over to Europe, we bought our bikes, what we were using in the US, the same spec, brought it over to Europe. Went down to Spain, went down to Italy, rode down there on some tracks, everything felt good. We went to Qatar and boom, you know, it was, um, yeah, we were lost. So, you know, we needed to get back to the drawing board. Um, me and Ryan flew back, uh, back to Belgium, did some testing uh, the week before Thailand and made some big changes. Obviously, we were, we were a lot stiffer uh, than a lot of the European guys and the setup in the US is a lot stiffer than, uh, than what we run here in Europe. And uh, yeah, we just, we just basically, you know, made a wrong, mis a wrong mistake and uh, tested in America, which, uh, you know, obviously the tracks there don't get as rough as here. And obviously there you've got brake ba braking bumps. Here you've got more acceleration bumps. So we got kind of lost, but, uh, you know, the team uh, regrouped. We went back to the drawing board and uh, did some testing. And then from Thailand onwards, it, uh, it went good. You know, we, we got some good results and uh, Ryan won the GP. I got eighth. Um, and then, you know, obviously... After Thailand, I got a really bad lung inf infection, and uh, Argentina didn't go that good. I was I was struggling to breathe, so you know, and then got landed on in Italy. So, <laughs> you know, it was just one thing after the other. But you know, I feel now that uh, I finally got my feet on the ground. I've had uh, the last two GPs have been mm. pretty solid, and uh, keep going up from here. So you mentioned Thailand briefly. Uh, probably remember for that crash with Gautier Paulin. Um, it was pretty scary, wasn't it? So early in the season. Could have gone a whole lot worse for both of you. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, obviously, um, I didn't jump over. Um, and Gautier did. And, you know, we, uh, we touched each other and bumped. So, you know, it was, uh, it was a pretty close call. And, you know, we both almost, I mean, Gautier fell over. And, you know, I almost went down, almost took out a TV stand. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a lucky save for sure. And what about the lung infection then? What, what happened there? Was that just, I mean, how'd you get a lung infection? I don't know. I got back to Belgium, um, went riding on uh, Wednesday. I mean, when I was riding, I wasn't feeling good. So I went to the doctor, uh, took some blood out. And uh, he said, yeah, your, my vitamin B12 is normally needs to be between like 800 and 1200. And I was at like 400. So he said, uh, you know, it's, it's going to take a while for your body to get rid of this infection. Uh, I went on antibiotics. 
didn't help. I had to go back to the doctor. Went on another dose of antibiotics. So, you know, I was manned down for five days on the on the couch. So, it was it was tough. You know, obviously, you know, I wanted to be riding and getting better. And we had some testing that we still needed to do. And I was I was restricted. I couldn't do anything. So, you know, it was a kind of bummer. But like I said, you know, the the, the team have been great. They've been really supportive over myself during that period and obviously Ryan with Ryan now hurt you know they've really been supportive and uh, doing anything they can to you know keep us happy and keep us uh, yeah keep us happy. Tyler going back to that pre-season period I mean you're a veteran of like seven years in the world championship you were testing out in America but was there a part of you thinking mm, maybe we should be in Lommel or you know we should be in one of these really rough European tracks but you know it was kind of hard to turn around to the whole team and especially someone like Ryan and say look let's pack the bags and go because we're in the wrong place. Was, did that enter in your mind sometimes? No, not at all, because uh, our goal was to do our off-season training in America. Um, you know, obviously the weather's great. We can ride, we can get the time in, we can do our bicycle rides, we can, you know, we can get our motos in, we can get our riding in, which is important. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had enough time. We booked our tickets for the 20th of January, so it was six weeks before Qatar, to come over to Europe. We went straight down to Sardinia, and we're riding down in Sardinia and riding some hard pack tracks down there. And uh, everything was going great. You know, the speed was good. Everything felt good. And then, you know, we went to Qatar and we we're like, wow, we we way off with our suspension, yeah, yeah. you know. And obviously, you know, for the team, we obviously switched to Shoa. It, uh, it was new for the team too. And um, yeah, we like I said, we, we were just lost. So we needed to get back to Belgium, do some testing. And uh, we sa solved that problem pretty quick, you know, obviously with me going out and um, getting eighth in uh, Thailand and... Obviously, Ryan winning. It was uh, it was a big change we did basically in a week, and we were still a little off. So there was still some more time for some testing that we need, that needed to be done. And you know, unfortunately, after after Thailand, I got sick, so you know, I was restricted with that. But but I guess that result obviously gave the team a bit of confidence that they much needed as well from being so far behind and then thinking, okay, we pulled it back. Great result and all that kind of thing. Um, We'll skip over Argentina because of your lung infection. But you arrived back in uh, Europe. Obviously, we'll talk about Ryan in a moment uh, because this came after Trentino. But for you, the, your best finish this year was Valkenswad. Was that as a result of the testing you'd been able to do? Was it track familiarity with you, obviously, living in Belgium for so long when you were in Europe before and, and knowing the ground as well? What, what was the, the difference there? Yeah, d uh, definitely Falcon Squad went good. Um, you know, obviously Arco uh, De Sol landed on me in the qualifying race and I whacked my head pretty yeah. good. So I sat out of that one. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you know, when you're so far down, <laughs> you can't get any w worse than what I was. You know, I was yeah. at, at rock bottom with the results and everything and, uh, you know, managed to bounce back in Falcon Squad. Uh, we got some testing in uh, the week before Falcon Squad. And, yeah, like, you know, the companies nowadays are always trying to get their bikes better and you know show have sent a new part over for me this week to try and uh, and it was better so you know the bikes getting better and better every time we basically go out on track they've got s something new for us to try or you know a, a new um, pressure change or whatever in the forks and it's definitely uh definitely the bikes getting better now and uh, you know i'm feeling uh my fitness is also a lot better i've been able to you know put in some solid uh solid weeks you know up until now What's stopping you getting on the podium? I mean, we haven't seen a Tyler Atre whole shot yet. I mean, that's got to be the first piece, hasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, starts are important nowadays. You know, the racing is so close. And, I mean, we saw with Gautier last weekend, the guy was fast at, uh, in, in Talavera, and, you know, he walked away with the seventh overall or whatever. You know, it's, um, but the guy was one of the fastest on the track. So, you know, the starts nowadays are so important. It's, uh, there's no way you're going to be coming from you know, 10th, 11th place start and coming to the front and winning because by the time you get into third or fourth, the first two guys have kind of checked out already. Mm. And to close down that gap, I mean, you really have to be, do something mm. special. But, you know, like I said, my goal is to get on the podium. It's, uh, you know, obviously it starts with the start, getting out of the gate. And, uh, you know, I felt in uh, Talavera I had some good starts. If I was a little bit more inside, I think I would have come out in the top three for sure. Uh, second race, I was fourth. And, um, you know, it's just... It's just putting together that consistent consistent laps in the beginning and having that intensity in the beginning of the motor to go with the front guys. And, you know, I'll, I'll get there for sure. Well, we haven't seen Ryan since, uh, obviously, he crashed in uh, in Trentino. The first race that we never saw him on the grid at all was Valkenswald. Uh, how is he? Uh, the injury from the press release that we received seems to have been a little bit more serious. Um, but has he been back on a bike yet? Um, because we were kind of hoping for him to be back this weekend or, or maybe next weekend. Um, but obviously, it's delayed at the moment. So 
apart from the press release, what else can you tell us if you can tell us anything? Um, you know, well, is no, he back on a bike at all? No, no, no. I mean, I think it's going to be a little while before we see him back on a back on a motorcycle. You know, it's, he hasn't even started mountain biking yet. So, right. you know, it's. I think it's that the bone that he's broken is way more complicated than what people think. Yeah. You know, I've spoken to Elden about it, and you know, a lot of guys have fallen down and just bruised it. And it's not like Ryan. It's not like that bone when Ryan broke it just broke in the middle. The thing's broken in three pieces. You know, so it's way more complicated than what people think. You know, I think it's going to be a long time before. You can even get on a motorcycle and ride and feel absolutely normal. Mm. It's uh, you know there's a lot of nerves down there and you know it's a lot it's a lot complicated than what you know some of the people think and they you know think oh six weeks he's going to be back on the bike and you know Ryan does seat bounce a lot when he's out on the track over bumps you know way more than any other guy. So you know I think it's I think it's going to be a while. Obviously you know the team have uh, have been supportive you know to him about it and uh, you know Ryan you know his his, his job should come down to win yeah. and. For Ryan to win, he needs to be 100% healthy, and you know that's when he's going to win. Well, he's your buddy and your teammate, but when you saw that crash, could you kind of believe it? Because I mean, have you ever done anything like that in your career? Oh, maybe on like a 60 or something, <laughs> or 80 or something. But you know, it's uh, yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of weird, man. We call him his new name now is called Larry for Larry Loopout. <laughs> so you know, I've I've never seen that in my career before. Um, obviously, man, shows that. Kawi has some serious power. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, obviously, we wish uh, Ryan a, a speedy recovery as well and hope to see him back at a track soon. But uh, before we get rid of you uh, and let you get back to lunch, I guess, uh, Tyler, um, Spain, a couple of weeks ago, we saw you mixing it a little bit more, slightly better starts, mixing it with the likes of uh, Todd Waters, Bobby, um, Gautier. Um, how, was that GP for with, uh, how was that GP for you in general? Uh, you looked a little bit more comfortable on the bike, I must say. Yeah, it was definitely, uh, like I said, it's definitely got better. We've, um, you know, especially myself, I've got an open mind now with testing. Obviously, uh, you know, going um, going forward now, we've got to test on, uh, you know, rough tracks, drive down to France and uh, on test and test on more Euro-style tracks, you know, especially when we come to GPs like here where it gets a lot of acceleration bumps. So, you know, it's been, uh, it's, it's been getting better. So I'm definitely looking forward to, you know, here on out for the rest of the year and, uh, you know, try to get, uh, get up on the podium. What do you think to the track in Tel Aviv, by the way? Just first time there for you, I think. No, no, I, I raced there last year. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, last year. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty difficult track to pass. You know, the only place you can really pass is down here on these tabletops. You really got to scrub off speed and, you know, it's basically the only place where you can make a pass happen. It's, uh, it's a very one-line track, but... Um, you know, we've come to a track this weekend where, you know, you, I think you'll be able to pass anyway. So looking forward to racing. I've always had good results in England. And, uh, you know, the crowd's always been amazing. So it should be some good fun. Okay. Well, look, uh, Tyler Rattray, thanks for joining us here this weekend. Wish you all the best as well. I'm sure you'll uh, do well. You had one of your better rides here last year as well, I, uh, I recall. Fourth overall, was it? Yeah. 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 So, yeah, uh, so, so looking forward to it. Maybe, maybe there's a, there's a box just around the corner for you. Yeah. Got to start with a whole shot first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no easier. pressure. <laughs> no pressure at all. Well, Tyler Rattray, thanks for joining us here. And uh, as uh, Tyler prepares to leave, we'll show you about our uh, little competition we've got running this weekend. Right, on our competition this weekend, you have the chance to win our awesome prize package, which includes a pair of air defense goggles uh, from Fox, a copy of the MXGP official video game, and an all-season pass to MXGPTV.com. All you have to do is guess who will take the Fox hole shots in both the MXGP and MX2 races this weekend. We will select three winners, so what are you waiting for? Play now. Submit your answer on our MXGP Facebook page, or for more information, go to MXGP.com, and don't forget to like or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You have to be in it to win it, so good luck with that. And these prizes could be making their way to you if you guess correctly. Also, it's worth mentioning that MXGP TV is offering a 30% discount on our season pass, which also includes the FIM Monster Energy Motocross of Nations. And I just happen to have a pair of the uh, Air Defense Fox goggles here because uh, last night in town, uh, Fox unveiled their new range of clothing. And uh, this is basically what you could be winning. The ones you saw were in yellow, and it's going to be the yellow ones that you win. But uh, a great pair of goggles. Uh, the lens, in terms of the way that it's made, it's a lot harder. And uh, also, I'm told um, 
when you look through the lens as well, there's no distortion with the eyes either. So uh, in terms of the lens, everything is as you should see it uh, and that kind of thing. So uh, a great product there from Fox. I thought you were going to put them on then for a moment. I more. was, but I've got a headset that I'm going to have to deal with as well. <laughs> so, um, but these could be yours and three lucky winners. But uh, we're almost running out of time here, uh, Adam. Uh, great conversation there from the two Monster Energy Kawasaki riders. But um, before headlines. we do go, headlines this week, uh, MX2, Petrov. Big yep. decision uh, moving from Itachi Revo KTM to Monster Energy Kawasaki w this weekend. What do you make to that? Yeah, of course, Dylan Ferrandis out with a knee injury rest of the season. So there's a spare Kawasaki sitting there. You know, maybe a little bit of pressure from the title sponsors to have those three bikes on, on the gate pool. So uh, Petr Petrov hasn't been working out with him for the British team. Um, I'm surprised maybe not the best time to jump out of that team right before their home Grand Prix. But yeah, he's, he's signed up with the rest of the Kawasaki and... Uh, whether that factory bike will give him the power he needs for, for to get the whole shot and the good starts that he needs is, is the big question. People will be looking at him. And I think now he, he doesn't have any more excuses. He rode a factory Suzuki before, but uh, now Petrov really, after uh, I think this is his fifth season in mm. MX2, he's still quite young, 21 years old, yeah. but uh, he needs to deliver. And it's not the first time he's been on a factory bike either. Of course, Rockstar Energy Suzuki is um, two or three years ago. So, uh, And I think we did a pit chat with him and he said the pressure then was... I'm on a factory team. Now it's he knows what to expect uh, from all of that. What about Valentin Guillo, um, the third rider in MX2 this year, third different winner, but obviously the third rider to win their first Grand Prix um, career victory, Tim Geiser and uh, Dylan Ferrandis. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a rider who not only won the Grand Prix, but did it in style. I mean, some of the, the images and that emerged from Valentin throwing that Yamaha around mm. was you know, spectacular. But I think the most um, important thing with regards to that a result, and especially for the Swiss, is that they've sorted out that Yamaha now. Um, it, it was all happening a little bit late in pre-season with the development, but with Akira, they've been working hard, the standing construct team, and I think you'll see him regularly at the front now. I, I think they've, they've, they've stumbled upon a setup that works for him. Um, it, it, with Julian Lieber, it happened a little bit earlier in the year. He got a po podium at round one, but uh, Guillaume now cannot be discounted out of podium battle, I'm pretty sure. And I'm sure this track will suit him right down to the ground as well. And what about Max Anstey, home Grand Prix, DRT Monster Energy Kawasaki? He could do with the result here. He could do with getting on the podium this weekend, couldn't he? Yeah, and, you know, the British kind of elite in MHGP has been halved. No Jake Nichols, uh, no Tommy Sell, unfortunately, this weekend. So you're looking at Sean Simpson, MXGP. Very good shout, an, an outside shout of a podium. But mm. Max, you'd have to say, you know, first year on that Kawasaki, back on the Kawasaki, then... Uh, I think his first ever British Grand Prix might have been with when he was initially riding the Kawasaki in 11 mm. back here. Yeah. And it was the first time he came back to Matali you know, in five years. So, mm. you know, maybe a few kind of stars colliding there. And, uh, yeah, he had bike issues in qualifying, didn't yeah. he? The bike was steaming and that kind of thing. Um, and what about in MXGP? Um, obviously, still no Ryan Villapoto. We know that. Uh, other injuries that we're uh, dealing with? Tommy So you just mentioned. We, Jeremy Van Horvick's back. Yeah. So that's plus one for Belgium. Kevin Strybos, Rockstar and Suzuki out again. Uh, mm. Problem with his thumb. Yeah. Uh, maybe due to overcoming sending for that wrist injury he had so we've lost him unfortunately a uh, rider that won in the motocross of nations finished third in the world last year so kevin's you know not a bit part player you know he was a guy i think would have been going for serious results here even though he's still trying to play catch up in terms of his speed but, but we do have another american michael lessi mm -hmm. uh not a grand prix debut um obviously the last time we saw him was glenn helen uh, a couple of years ago but um what can we expect from him, do you think, this well, weekend? First of all, it's a really bold move by the team, trying different series. They're not committing just to one championship. They're mixing around. They're going to Canada as well, I think. Um, so I, I think it's a tall ask. I think it is, it is a big ask. I mean, like Thomas Covington was saying earlier, this is a very American-y kind of track. So he's picked the right place, I yep. think. Um, but I, <laughs> I'd be surprised if he's in the top 10. I think you'll be shocked at how the MXGP, the level of speed has changed from when he did the Alton and Glen Helen, which I think was 2010 or 2011. Mm. And it was his hometown track in the US. Yeah. So, uh, Any you know, podium there, of course. Great, great to see him as part of the gate, but uh, if, he, if, he gets, if he gets anywhere near the top five, I'll be very surprised. And um, finally, Tony Cairoli, last time out, took his first Grand Prix victory of 2015 at his eighth attempt. Obviously, he hadn't won since Lommel, uh, the Grand Prix of Belgium in August of last year or September of last year. He did it on the brand new 450 KTM as well. So a, uh, a long overdue uh, win, but probably the shot in the arm that he needs to get his championship back on track. Would you agree? I think that's why he did it. Yeah. You know, changed up the bike, a bike that's won the AMA Supercross Championship. So uh, you know the, the the performance level of that thing, it's it's already proven, you could say. So and and Tony only his second ride on a 450 KTM after 2013, trying one when he'd already won the championship. Um, I think, you know, he's going to be the man to catch. Won a world championship here in 2013. Matali Basin yep. got very good previous at this location. So uh, he's got to be the main man, hasn't he? 
Well, we'll see, won't we, on Sunday when we do it all again here. We're almost at the halfway stage of uh, MXGP for 2015, but uh, Matsley Basin just around the corner. In fact, just over our shoulder, and the track is looking prime. I've got to say, Justin Barkley and his team doing a great job. But you can catch all the action on MXGP TV. As always, we'll be live, so I hope you can join us tomorrow. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in France in a week's time. Bye for now.